Hello, I'm attorney Brian Mayer, and these are the answers to your questions about visitation, child custody, and the coronavirus. Now, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you find this video to be helpful, you will most likely find other videos that I've published to be helpful to your situation as well. Now, when I answer these questions, I'll be answering several. So to save you time, I'm going to be publishing uh, the time frame for the answers that are being uh, the questions that are being answered right here. You're welcome to skip ahead in the video and see the answers that you just want to see, but I do recommend watching the whole video because as this coronavirus becomes more prolific, as it becomes the spread becomes greater, these issues are going to become more and more pronounced, and an issue that is facing you right now. Uh, might be different from an issue that's facing you a little bit later on. So I'm going to try to answer all of those questions here, but feel free to cut to the portion that you need to be answered right now. The first question I'm going to be answering is what happens when a child has to travel to see one parent because the parents live in different geographic locations and one of the parents does not want the child to travel due to the coronavirus outbreak. Uh, this has actually come up a lot because you have parents, oftentimes they live in different states and the child has to travel by air and uh, one parent or the other, usually the custodial parent, is worried about the child picking up the coronavirus uh, during the travel. So perhaps the child is traveling from Florida where uh, she lives with mom to New York where she lives with, with dad and mom is worried about the daughter traveling to New York and maybe it's not her concern, maybe she's not trying to keep the child from dad even, but um, she's, worried about, uh, she's worried about the travel right now and just doesn't want it to happen. Uh, the question is what rights do the parties have in this situation? And the answer is that both parties are still bound by the court order. The fact that there is a pandemic right now does not change the court order, and the court order still must be obeyed. Now, this means that if the child is with mom in Florida and dad's in New York, uh, the child still needs to travel for spring break or whatever's, whatever's in the order, uh, regardless of whether the coronavirus is rampant or dying down or um, just getting started or somewhere in between. The court order is the court order. So the child still must be transported according to the court order. This leads to the next question of what can a parent do if they feel that traveling is too risky for their child right now? And the answer to that question is that theoretically, they can request a modification to the custody order. They can go to court, they can say this is an emergency situation or it's just not in the best interest of the child to be traveling right now and the potential harm outweighs the harm of them not having contact with the parent uh, on this particular visit. So uh, the court order should be modified and the child should not be traveling. Um, theoretically, the court would have the power to do that, but the problem is that with this being a pandemic and with the, uh, the just given the incubation period and how the symptoms unfold, and the fact that it's probably going to be very widespread, um, it's gonna be something that the courts will see as pretty much unavoidable. And so whether the child is sitting at home and just having contact with friends, family, classmates, neighbors, or if the child is traveling by airplane, uh, the courts are going to be inclined to look at those situations as really being no different because the child is being exposed to that risk one way or another, just in different forms. If there's something truly exceptional about the child's situation where they are at a demonstrably lower risk by not traveling, by staying at home, uh, maybe they just, uh, maybe they're homeschooled and their parents have, uh, the custodial parent has them on lockdown and they can truly protect them from this virus, um, you might be able to persuade a judge that uh, travel for the short term uh, either can be canceled or some sort of alternative, less risky travel option uh, might, 
uh, be appropriate to make available. Or maybe even if the child uh, has some sort of respiratory issue and they're particularly high risk if they contract uh, the virus, then there's probably there a really good argument for um, making some sort of modification for the time being. For example, if the child uh, suffers from asthma, if uh, their doctor can give the opinion that this child is at high risk of uh, suffering uh, serious consequences or death if they, uh, they contract the virus, uh, then that sort of information could be persuasive to a court. But for the most part, it's really going to, it's really going to, any request of that nature is really going to be construed with great scrutiny. And what uh, I tell most people most of the time is that if you want to make a modification, prepare to go in and lose. Now, on the other side of that too, if you're the parent who wants to receive the child, and if the other parents, the custodial parents, uh, doesn't want to release them or have them travel due to the coronavirus, um, for the most part, the facts are, in most cases, are just gonna be on your side. Um, you would want to document, uh, you would typically want to document uh, the child's good health. Um, you would want to be able to discuss precautions that you could take to help minimize the child's exposure to the coronavirus uh, during transportation and during the visits. But uh, for the most part, the law really is going to be, uh, the law and the courts are really going to be on the side of the parent who wants the visitation to take place. So expect it, uh, prepare for it, have your specific case examined in person uh, by an attorney, but that's generally the way that these have been leaning. So that answers the question about travel necessary for the visitation to take place. But what about unnecessary? travel? What about the situation where one parent simply on their custodial time wants to travel with the child by air to attend a crowded theme park or something like that and you feel that there is going to be some exposure there uh, that the child might not otherwise have and you don't want the travel to take place even though there's no dispute over the child visiting with the other parent? Well, again, the courts are going to be looking at this as a situation of the child is probably probably going to be exposed in some form or another. They're at risk for exposure, whether that they're, they're at home or whether they're going out. And so, although going out may increase the risk, uh, the risk is generally being perceived as not different enough to justify infringing on the rights and discretion of the parent who has the custody at the time. So if dad wants to travel, uh, take their child on vacation to Disney World in Orlando and mom is worried about the child uh, traveling from New York or where, wherever uh, and being on the airplane and being in the theme park and having all of that exposure, um, unless you can show that there's some sort of special risk about the uh, nature of the travel, then in all likelihood, uh, the court will probably not agree to any sort of custody modification prohibiting the uh, special trip from taking place. Uh, again, you'll want to have your case evaluated in person by an attorney to kind of weigh and make sure that the special circumstances in your case uh, would not change that sort of answer, but generally, uh, generally, if you're going to request any sort of modification along those lines, you should make that request expecting, uh, expecting to lose. Now, none of this is to say that you couldn't negotiate a different outcome with the other parents, uh, but if it comes down to you guys just can't agree, if you have to go to court, the parent who's not wanting the travel to take place is going to be fighting an uphill battle uh, in most cases to persuade the court that the the order should be modified based on this pandemic. Something else that we're starting to see now is mandatory government quarantines of small communities and neighborhoods because of this coronavirus. And so that raises the question, what do you do when you're placed under quarantine or the other parent is placed under quarantine and you still have this 
visitation order where the child has to go between a, uh, a quarantined and non-quarantined home. And the answer is that the quarantine takes precedent over the court order. Now the reason for this, so that you can understand, is that you have to generally obey court orders. And if you willfully and knowingly disobey a court order, then that is contempt of court. It's a criminal offense. You must obey the court orders. But the, it can only be, it's only a criminal matter. It's only a violation of the court order if the violation is willful. Now, if the government places you under mandatory quarantine, your disobedience to the court order at that point is no longer willful because you're put in this catch-22 situation where you can either disobey the order for quarantine or you can disobey the court order for custody. So no matter what, you're disobeying a court order. And as it, as it goes, it's the, uh, it's the government quarantine that takes precedent over the custody order. So if the other parent is under quarantine and the child is with you, uh, the general rule then is that you don't have to deliver the child to the other parent while they're under quarantine. If the child is with you and you're placed under quarantine, uh, the child will need to stay with you until the quarantine has been lifted. So it's going to be terribly inconvenient and confusing, but the quarantine takes precedent over any custody or visitation order. Another question that a lot of parents are facing is what happens to the custody and visitation order if there is a travel ban? Now this would be the situation where, for example, the child is to be transported from Florida to New York to visit one parent or the other, or whatever location to whatever location, but uh, the government comes in and says, okay, um, there's not gonna be any more traveling at this point. You're not traveling from, there's no more air travel between these cities or whatever. And the question is, is this, how will this be regarded then if, uh, if this travel ban sort of goes into effect? And this goes back to the answer that I gave with the last question about the willful and knowing disobedience of a court order. Now, you know that the court order requires the child to be transported, but is it willful if there's a travel ban? And the answer is probably, but it depends on the situation. And I'll explain. So if you have, let's say, for example, parents who live on opposite sides of the country and uh, the child is supposed to go out and visit one parent for a week for spring break or something like that, and now there's this travel ban put into effect and uh, the airlines are no longer transporting uh, people for however long and you simply uh, cannot transport the child by air uh, because of this travel ban. In that situation, the order simply can't be obeyed because there's no reasonable way to have the, parent, the child transferred from one part of the country to the other for a week's time. Um, it, takes, it takes typically a good five or six days to drive across country. Uh, and then of course you would have to drive back if you're dropping the child off. And people just can't do that. So uh, that's a situation where the disobedience to the order is not willful because of a travel ban being put into place. Now, let's say instead of being across country, uh, let's say the child is not being tra transported by plane, but they're being transported by bus. And instead of from one side of the country to the other, they're being transported to the other side of the state, maybe three hours away or something like that. Uh, in that situation, you're still going to, in most cases, need to deliver the child simply because it's at that point there are, are options that are available for transporting the child. Um, there are non-air flight options. Air flight might be the most convenient, but the transportation is something that could be accomplished in uh, by different means and typically uh, in the same amount of time that, uh, that might be originally contemplated, maybe a little bit longer, but not really, it's not really a situation where the prohibition is prohibitive to the actual transportation of the child. So if you can transport the child, if the circumstances allow the child to be transported, then the child needs to be transported. 
but if there's a travel ban that prevents the parents from being able to transport the child uh, across country in light of everything that's happening, if it's just not realistic anymore, uh, then the disobedience of that order would uh, would not uh, uh, would not result in any sort of penalization for the parent who fails to obey it. Now, uh, this certainly is not advice, but generally speaking, uh, for the parent who is not able to deliver because of a travel ban or some sort of change in circumstances, uh, it's usually to that parent's tactical advantage to nonetheless reach out for, to the other parent and try to schedule some sort of makeup time so that the parent can see the child later. Because even if you uh, are not able to obey the order due to some sort of travel ban, uh, the court would still look upon it favorably if you still tried to work out some sort of arrangement so that the visitation could still take place. Another question that has been coming up is what happens if the custody and visitation order is based around the school calendar, but the coronavirus changes the school calendar? So for example, perhaps the child is scheduled to have a week off for spring break, but now the school decides that they're gonna shut down for spring break, and spring break is going to be extended for a month or two months or something like that. Where is the child placed in that sort of situation? The first thing that should be done is to look at the lettering in the order and see what it actually says because every order is going to be worded a little bit differently and your order may actually be clear on what's supposed to happen here. So you first and foremost have to follow the letter of the order. Now that said, uh, if the wording in the order is unclear, then if you can't reach an agreement with the other party on what should happen there, then the answer is actually to go back to court and ask for clarification on the order that was made. And this is typically accomplished through what's called a motion for clarification. That's just going to the court and saying, look, this is what was ordered, but we can't figure out what was meant in this circumstance. What did you mean? Because we can't figure it out now that this unexpected thing has happened. So a motion for clarification is an option. But what happens if the order is clear, but it's simply never contemplated some sort of situation like this? Let's say spring break was supposed to be a week long and dad was supposed to have the kids for spring break, but now because of the coronavirus, it looks like spring break is going to last for eight weeks. And uh, the child is going to be perhaps eight weeks without seeing the other parent because of how this order was unfortunately worded. Well, ultimately, when you look at orders, the intent comes into play. And so if you're not, if the intent does not seem to match up with the language in the order, this again is a situation where a motion for clarification is probably appropriate because sometimes you just can't anticipate everything. Nobody a year ago anticipated that this coronavirus would be spreading and schools would be shutting down and events would be uh, getting canceled. Uh, there's simply no way that it could have been contemplated. So what really is the intent of the order? The court can answer that question and a motion for clarification is a way to get. The last question that I'm starting to see arise that's becoming more common is, can I use the coronavirus as an excuse to deny visitation to the other parents? Not because I'm concerned about the coronavirus, but because I believe that the visitation is not in the best interest of the child and I don't have an order that I think is in the best interest of the child. So can I use this virus as an opportunity to deny visitation to the other parents? The answer is no. And what's more is that if you attempt to do that, in all likelihood, you are creating an even more dangerous legal situation for yourself and for your child. Now, the court doesn't like parents to take advantage of situations. The court is concerned about the best interests. The court is concerned about the best interest of the child. If the court has decided that visitation needs to be a certain way, the court does not want a parent looking for excuses to disrupt the court-ordered visitation. 
And in fact, if the court perceives that a parent is using the coronavirus as an excuse to deny visitation in violation of the order, then the court can actually come back and penalize uh, the parents in certain ways if they attempt to do that, or even if they go to court and make the argument uh, under false pretenses that the visitation should not take place. So these are my answers on the coronavirus and how they affect custody and visitation. I really strongly encourage you to subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Uh, I have videos on things like uh, what to do when a parent disobeys a court order, when can the court take action on a disobeyed uh, court order, uh, how does one prove disobedience of a court order. And all of that really just ties into this question of what are the sort of things that you're gonna to have to worry about if uh, something changes because of the coronavirus, what is the burden of proof going to be, how can I prove it, and if I'm innocent or if I'm just righteous, how can I defend myself and advocate for me and my child? So thank you very much. Please consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video below. If you have any questions on this or anything else that you'd like to see answered at some point, please leave a comment and let me know. What do you think will happen due to the coronavirus? Leave those comments below. Thank you for watching.